All right, welcome to the season of No Shelf Control, the podcast with books, booze, and banter hosted by authors for readers, because let's face it, we're all bookworms at heart. This season, we'll be chatting about book to screen adaptations and trending book talk books. I'm Lindsay Sparks. And I'm Lindsay Pogue. Grab a cocktail, kick back, and enjoy the show. If we were in The Wizard of Oz, I would be the scarecrow because I don't have a brain, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Mm. Oh, anyway. Welcome to this episode of the podcast, everybody. Tonight we are excited. We are um, talking about um, a film, book to film adaptation. Uh, it's kind of an oldie but goodie for us. Um, we love it so much. I, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie Austin Land with Carrie Russell, but uh, it's one that we fell in love with uh, years ago. It's back. like a hidden gem. It really is, especially if you're a Jane Austen fan. Oh, it's, gosh. it's perfection. So we <laughs> found it years ago, and we just recently discovered that it's actually a book. So, of course, we had to read the book so we can compare. And obviously, we had to rewatch the film as well. Mm-hmm. So anyways, um, we are talking about Austin by Shannon Hale. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but <laughs> there is a second book in the series. I know. And I actually looked it up. I almost went straight into it. Um, but so far as I could tell, it doesn't have this, any of the same characters. Yeah, Maybe I, know, has... I noticed. I don't know. Did you start it? No, I didn't. I just, I was looking at it last night, but anyways, we can talk about that later, but I thought that was really interesting. Fun surprise. Mm-hmm. So Anyways, so yeah, we're going to be chatting about that because we are both huge Jane Austen fans, Mm -hmm. and um, it's just like the epitome of what I think every fangirl of any Jane Austen or Pride and Prejudice, they just, they wish they could be transported. And this book, uh, this book and story, this film, everything about it, it just, it's perfect. (laughs) So anyways, we're going to be talking about that, Um, but before we get started, we are both winding down for the evening in Mm -hmm. our West Coast time zone here. Um, It's eight o'clock, so do you have anything fun that you're drinking tonight? Oh, you're going to be so shocked right now. Red wine. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're going to be even more shocked because I have, for twins, I also am drinking red wine. (laughs) That's so rare. I know. Uh, yeah. Um, anyways, I made uh, I made like one of my favorite meals that I make with my grandpa's recipe is my spaghetti or my mm. grandpa's spaghetti. And it just sounded like it would be perfect. And then I was like, yay, extra perk. Then we can both drink our red wine. Yay. Yeah. Mm. Well, mine so, is from, um, I think it's called, mine is called Discovery. And it's from DeLille Cellars, which is one of my favorite wineries. And um, nice. I can't remember if I took you there, if we went there when you last time. It, or it doesn't took sound summer. familiar. But next time, I'm a wine club member. So the next time that you visit, we nice. will definitely go. Is it in Woodenville too? Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Fun. Yeah. Fun. They have a really cool tasting room too. They just moved last year and it's it's really big and pretty and nice. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. Um, I'm drinking my favorite it's uh called benevolent dictator it's a pinot noir and it is uh from silver trident which is i'm also a member there so. mm, i think you took me there yeah so anyway um their pinots are amazing so anyway mm. yeah so we are both uh, i feel like it should be winter or something but it's really just really <laughs> hot here and humid and <laughs> it was actually cooler today here than it's been for a long time it's been 90s and like low hundreds but Wow. Today it was like maybe, maybe in the low 70s. Nice. It felt really nice. I had a sweater on a lot. Nice. Yeah. Like sweaters. <laughs> so, but anyway, well, okay. So we both are armed. Uh, our glasses <laughs> are full. What are you winding down from? What were you working on today? Um, today I wrote chapter 32 of The Raven Queen. <laughs> yeah um and um, <laughs> this was the the chapter in which I channeled all of my mom anxiety <laughs> so that was great I've multiple times while I was writing I was just crying oh really yes yeah, I can just, imagine I, I can have imagine. I have crippling mom anxiety so I mean I have terrible anxiety anyway but I have you know intrusive thoughts spitting yeah. around my head keeping me up at night 
mom anxiety about my children, terrible things happening to them. So I just like really channeled that <laughs> into Dell in nice. this chapter. I don't know if you've read it yet or not. I haven't, but, no. Yeah, it's not like, I mean, you know what happens in it already, yeah. obviously, but it's not like- It's different though, going to read it. Yeah. yeah, but it's like nothing terrible happens in this chapter exactly. Um, yeah. But it, it's though. it's the, all the what ifs in her head. I yeah. Think. Yeah. I, uh, that's what I'm going to be starting first thing in the morning. So that's how I'll get my day started. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, but then, uh, other than that, I've been working on, um, I just had my Patreon drop. Well, I decided to start breaking up my Patreon drops into two different days a month. So on the first and the 15th. So I had the first half. Uh, a couple days obviously it's the third today's the third one we're recording it so I had my patreon drop two days ago and so that was really fun I always love I love the release day for those because I get people my readers comment on it immediately and they're like now we want more nice <laughs> and I'm like okay next month <laughs> that's fun <laughs> so yeah that stuff's just fun to write um yeah I started a new drawing but- fun yeah fun 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 yeah what about you um I am done with my sea of storms revisions which feels really good I have it I sent it to a new round of betas just because I added like those 10 chapters um and (laughs) because you like added 10 chapters yeah um (laughs) Killian has chapters now so I wanted to have new readers read it you know make sure that it made sense (laughs) <laughs> anyway I sent it out yesterday and I got me feedback already and like oh my god it's all good and I was like of yes. Course. yes okay so anyways that makes me feel better about that um and I am I'm actually getting to work on um Land of Fury again I didn't realize I'd already written like 13 or 14 chapters so I'm starting from the beginning because it's been like two months since I worked on it mm. so I'm starting at the beginning and I'm going through and now I'm like getting super excited because now that I've written City of Ruin which is ties in it's at the same world so it ties into sea of storms and now sea of storms is finished now it's like so cool to like write the last book that has all the little like easter eggs from all mm-hmm. the different things in it you know mm-hmm. so i'm really enjoying going through that and i'm just like going <laughs> all the time. i'm like that's gonna be so fun or whatever you know so, um but that's exciting and uh yeah so I don't know. I feel like in each one of these books, I've had kind of a cool little twist at the end. So this one's going to have a really cool one too. So um, I'm excited to dive into it. Um, but yeah, they so are that's... great books. So for any of our lis- listeners who have not read them, well, obviously they can't read Sea of Storms yet, but they should Soon. definitely read City yeah. of Ruin. Thank you. Yeah, they're definitely, I feel like, you know, you and I, we kind of write all over and I know you were saying <laughs> that, um, Song of Scarabs, Fallen Stars, that was the one that you're like, this is what I love to write. Like, this has all mm-hmm. the things in it. And I feel like this series for me has all the things in mm-hmm. it. So I think that I'm not saying that I'm like a historical fantasy author or anything, but I feel like that's like right now, that's what I'm really feeling. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Like, cause it's also dystopian too. So it's got like that really like, I don't know. I don't know. But it's it's really fun I really like it um and no idea what I'm gonna be working on next but it makes me you know kind of like really think about well oh yeah you're reaching an ending yeah weird huh yeah interesting are you you have no idea no idea what you're gonna do I mean I have a few different things that I want to write um I mean I'm gonna be working on something with you know someone else um (laughs) I'm not gonna uh talk about that yet but um I'm gonna be working on that but other than that like I don't and that's just a fun that's a fun thing so I don't have like a schedule for anything you know mm-hmm. so I mean other than whatever we decide to do with the ending legacy yeah. obviously but um I think I'm gonna definitely take a break for a while just because there's a lot of things that I want to really focus on that I haven't been mm-hmm. but then I can really decide like do I want to keep writing in this world or do I mm-hmm. want to create a new world something similar or what direction do I want to go I really like the retelling stuff is fun like Sea of Storms isn't necessarily retelling of a fairy tale that's like Cinderella fairy tale but it's a Norse it's a Norse story it's like um Mm -hmm. mythology within the Norse culture uh Scandinavian culture so um I don't know it's just really fun to just like 
put a different spin on it, you know? So I don't know. I keep waiting for you to write like, because I know you love these shows so much, um, like something that's like medieval fantasy ish. Yeah. Kind of <sighs> either like England or Vikings related, or just like, I, that just seems like, just seems like right up your alley. Yeah. I wish there were more shows. I always tell Dennis you <laughs> don't have shows. He goes, you have shows. You just don't. He's like, there are shows out there, Lindsay. <laughs> there are I'm, shows. Like, I'm like, there are no shows. <laughs> He's so disheartened all the time. Is there are shows. Hmm. <laughs> Give me a break. Anyways, yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But anyway, definitely lots going on still. Yeah. Um, I know you have a couple things, like you said, that you're working on. And all of mine have these deadlines I'm just trying to keep to. And it's going okay. So, it feels all right. But yeah. I'm ready for it that. is just like such a weird feel- feeling though when you are approaching the end of a series mm-hmm. and it's like something good like <laughs> next year this time next year I'm going to be approaching the end of the Atlantis legacy that I've been working on for like four years now <laughs> and it's going to be super weird <laughs> yeah I think it'll be different because I know I'm not leaving the world but um yeah that's true but it's still yeah it still well, is just- like weird the other weird thing too is that I'm kind of, it's not, I'm not going to say struggling with, but that it's, it's kind of, it's on my mind because I'm doing all these things now and I'm feeling all this pressure to get things now, but these books aren't coming out until October in March of next year. Mm-hmm. So it's weird to have them done so soon and then mm-hmm. not be coming out. That's another weird kind of lingering feeling, you know, it's just mm-hmm. like, because I feel like to my readers are like, what? you're why are you stressed like there you have nothing coming out for like what feels like a year yeah but at the same time there's still production stuff on the back end yeah and I'm just like yeah but um I do have one thing that I could announce that I haven't announced anywhere else because um I wanted to wait until I had all the marketing material and stuff but I've been talking with Podium and Hmm. so they um I'm I think I've mentioned it, but they are um, doing the audiobooks for the entire Ruin Land series, which is a really big deal. And um, I finally um, found, or they finally told me when the uh, date is that it's going to be, that City of Ruin is going to be ready. And it's going to be September 20th. And then um, they're already going to, they already have like all the narrators for all the books. And so they're going to, they have everything ready to dive into Sea of Storms as soon as I can get that to them. And so I'm really excited about all of that. As soon as I have, um, like links and, and all that, I can go ahead. I don't even have the cover cause they're going to tweak the cover a little bit and do their own podium thing to it. Mm. But as soon as I have all that, I can post that and get some pre-orders up. Are you allowed to share the narrators? Yeah. So, um, I think <laughs> I guess I pause. Do you want to wait until next episode? Yeah, let's do that. Um, okay. Is it, can you tell us, is it the same? I, I can't remember. I know you told me who the narrators are, are and I can't remember who they are, mm-hmm. but I also can't remember if you said if it's the same narrators for each book or if it's different. Yeah, they're the same ones. Um, and um, in fact, here, I can look really quick, but um, yeah, so they're the same ones. And it's really cool because uh, one of them, you know, because you're working with Neil. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. I didn't um, know. I, maybe I didn't know that. Yeah. So it, it's really cool. I won't go into the process, but I He's got to give Nick. him, <laughs> yeah, I got to give him, I got to give them my wish list. And as you know, I have, um, I have, I mean, I kind of talked to him before I kind of connected you guys. Mm-hmm. And so when they, you know, said, who are you interested in? And I was like, well, I really, you know, been wanting to work with him and everything. And, um, so that was really cool to go ahead and um, like get my wish list, you know, for that. Um, and then uh, I haven't, it's funny, he started following me on Facebook, but I'm like, it's one of those things like, am I allowed to talk to him like outside of like the contract? Like, I don't know how that oh. works, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, he's super nice. Yeah, I know. I know he is. He's really cool. Um yeah, no. So I'm just, I'm excited and uh, they're working on it and they're doing all three books. So, and I think Neil's going to be really excited because I went from having no killing chapters in Sea of Storm to now he has chapters. So I think they're, I had to email them and be like, hey, you guys, just so you know. And they're like, okay, we'll let Neil know. That's exciting. So, <laughs> anyways. Yeah. But yeah. That's fun. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So, anyway, 
City of Ruin is coming to audio everywhere. No, mm. I'm just kidding. Anyway, okay, so let's move on. Um, obviously, we've been reading some Jane Austen inspired <laughs> fiction lately. What? Uh, else are you listening to slash reading slash? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Watching. I'm okay. still. I'm almost done with uh, Kingdom of Ruin by KF Brain, um, which. I will say again, is not a reflection of the book and is more a reflection of my life. (laughs) So, and the fact that I have been spending so much time drawing and I don't, my brain doesn't work well with listening to a story and drawing at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Now that drawing's in the mix. Yeah. What about you? Um, So I actually... (laughs) <laughs> so I, I I'm like kind of it's so funny when I like think of the books that I read because they're like like so different <laughs> uh so I just finished Priest by Sierra Simone which is pretty intense um and that's like a I I don't I think it's just like a really spicy romance but um <laughs> yeah definitely only read it if you're really into really spicy stuff and there's a lot of religious th- um anyway yeah I don't, I don't know <laughs> Yeah, and so I don't know. I mean, I'm not a religious person, but I feel like for some people that could be like a hard book. So anyway, yeah. So I don't know if I would necessarily, you know, I don't want to say you should all read it, but I'm just yeah. Anyways, I read it. It was it was entertaining. Um, but I'm super stoked because as you know, I am listening to Song of Achilles again. Mm -hmm. Which is our next book, right? Yeah. And I was telling uh, Lindsay today, I texted her and I was like, <laughs> she is, did, it, it was funny. is it weird <laughs> that I love the narrator, but I have a major crush on him when he is, when he's doing the voice for, for Achilles. And when he's she's like, no, that's not weird. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, later on, I texted her and I was like, and then they remind you that he's only 12 years old. And then you're kind of like, oh, that feels really awkward that I am attracted to him. And then I'm like, ah, but do I care? Not really. <laughs> He's a demigod, right? I mean, (laughs) that like doesn't count. I know. Besides, in Greek mythology, weren't they like, we don't even want to know what they were doing in Greek mythology, really, right? They were doing a a lot. Yeah. A lot. (laughs) So anyway, but yeah, um, other than that, though, I did start a book, you guys. Um, (laughs) I know I've been talking about the Hacienda that- Oh, Yeah is it is pretty creepy i thought it was goth gonna be gothic and it's gothic but it's like horror gothic so if you like creepy books this is a good one for you um but i really like the historical element to it uh it takes place i think it's after the mexican war Mm. but um anyway definitely and then i'm reading another creepy one called the house made for book club and guys that is a mind fuck so it's it's one of those things where I I've been listening to it and then I kind of want to stop because I'm getting anxiety but I want to mm. keep reading but I'm getting anxiety so who is the author of that one um I can't remember off the top of my head but her last name is McFadden I think or McFadden I can look it up um for sure but it's essentially about this woman who goes and she has a pretty shady past and so she has a secret to hide I think this is all in the um, description, so I'm not giving anything away. But then she goes to be a housemaid for this really wealthy family, and nothing there is as it seems either. So it gets really intense. Hmm. So anyway, if you like uh, thriller stuff, it's probably a good one. Hmm. Interesting. All You're right. reading a lot of stuff right now. I know. It's like I totally forgot about all those things. But um, yeah, anyways, moving on. All right. I, I don't think that I had seen this last time, but I do need to, I feel like I need to do a shout out for this. It's not a book, it's a movie. Um, but I finally watched The Lost City and it was amazing. And everybody who listens to this podcast will most likely love it. It was awesome. <laughs> it was can so just, good with Sandra Bullock. And can Jenny I just Tatum. tell you, so good. even the opening scene where she's there in the pit or whatever, you see it in the, in the preview too. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, oh my God, this is so real. Yeah. Like, there's this whole scene written and played out and then you have to you, when you really sit and look Delete at the that. logistics <laughs> and you're like that would never work that would not happen yeah. why is there snakes there not there yeah. and you delete 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 and it's like so disheartening and you're like uh you like deflate a little where did all these snakes come from 
yeah. it was great it was so good so anyways yeah uh i'm glad you finally saw that and um it was fun it was a lot of fun and i think we both decided our husbands didn't hate it and actually enjoyed it a little bit yeah <laughs> yeah my husband was very reluctant to admit that he didn't hate it but he yeah. was like it didn't suck <laughs> yeah like, that's right it my, didn't suck yeah my husband is a hard pass on Channing Tatum he cannot stand him he thinks he's like the worst in the world so <laughs> I actually made him go to the movie theater to see it and he was like actually that wasn't so bad he was kind of perfect for that role and I started laughing <laughs> he was perfect I think that yeah it was one of those roles where he's like playing himself or I mean I don't know what he's really like but he's like right it's that very much seems like he's making fun of himself yeah the cover model and all that mm -hmm. he also did really good in 21 jump street and i feel like he was mm -hmm. also really good in his commute his com comedal element is that a thing Am I making comedic that up? comedic yeah comedic, i guess i, I don't know anyway, we do that good we do our delete 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 <laughs> you know, we can't delete them after they come out of our mouths yeah that would be nice all right, ladies and gents, shall we move on? Austin Land, I'm going to, um, is there anything else? Sorry, before we jump in. I feel like I could easily keep going on tangents, so I'm trying to keep us on Yeah, track. no, I'm full of tangents today, so yeah, let's me too. move on. I got so excited. I was like, oh, I want to talk about my audiobooks, and then I was like, oh my god, I'm not prepared. I don't know what I can talk about, and then I'm like, <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, um, okay, so Awesome Land is by Shannon Hale, and just to know, um, for anybody who is listening, anybody who might have read this book and or watched the movie, she's actually a middle grade fantasy teacher, I think, or uh, author. She's not, <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't really write adult fiction. Oh, funny. Yeah, so I went and looked on her website, and it's all, like, it's all children's fiction and fantasy huh. stuff, adventure stuff, so just letting, putting that out there in case anybody's interested to see what kind of book she has for kids. Um, okay, so Awesome Land. Here we go. Jane it sounded Hayes. like you said Awesome Land. Well, that too. It's awesome. <laughs> awesome Land in Austin Land. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, Jane Hayes is a young New Yorker with a real romantic problem. No man she's met can compare to her one true love, Mr. Darcy, from Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. But when a wealthy relative bequeaths her a trip to, the, to an English resort for Austen fanatics, Jane's fantasies of meeting the perfect Regency era gentleman suddenly become realer than she ever could have imagined. Dressed in empire waist gowns and torn between a sexy gardener and an actor playing the brooding Darcy role, Jane finds herself mastering the rules of the etiquette and of the resort's flirtatious games. But when it's time to bid Austin Land goodbye, can Jane really leave her fantasies and the two men who've played into them behind? So before we dive in, this is a spoiler alert. Danger Will Robinson. We are going to talk about all things Austin Land. So, but I mean, to be fair, if you are familiar with Jane Austen, I feel like you pretty much know the beats of this story. A hundred percent. Yeah. The second you start it, you know where this is going. And again, if you do like Jane Austen and you do like Pride and Prejudice, you, we recommend it just because it's so highly. Fun. You can probably highly. relate to little uh, Jane, Jane, Jane Hayes. Hayes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Miss so, Erstwhile. <laughs> yes. The copper package. <laughs> okay. No more inside jokes. Okay. Oh um, my God. It's so good. <laughs> okay. So before we start getting to like nitty gritty, do you feel like, okay, we kind of, we've already talked about what it's about. I feel like this, the series, I even had to go double check because it almost felt like the book was made before the, or book, the ser the movie was made before the series because it's almost so identical in so many ways. Like mm. it was so strange to me. I was like, wait, did they write the book after they made the movie? Because I feel like the casting, a lot of it was like, it's like they wrote written for Miss Charming for yes. Jennifer Coolidge. Yes, like it's it's insane. I was so, uh, and like the uh, the audiobook narration, it was like she was I know pretending to be Jennifer Coolidge. Yes, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, that's why I was I had to go look, but it was written before the movie. <laughs> but what I did note when I was watching the movie at the credits, Shannon Hell was part of she helped write the screenplay, so I think that that had a lot to do with it. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, maybe Jennifer Coolidge was her inspiration for Miss Charming. 
already. Yeah, maybe. Oh, wouldn't that be so, you're like, when I wrote this book, you're the person that I had in mind. I know. And then to have them actually, I mean, that's just amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So (laughs) that being said, um, what, there are some differences though. So what do you think Mm. were some of the biggest differences between so three in the film? Yeah. I have like a whole list. Uh, (laughs) Um, but, um, so Miss Charming's character, Jennifer Coolidge, um, her character is, even though, like we said, it's like she was written for her she is different in the movie. Um, she, I guess, plays a bigger part or she's more friends with Jane in the movie mm-hmm. than she is in the book. Um, so that was a difference um, that I really liked, actually. Um, Miss Hartwright's character was very different um, in the book. Like she, in the book, I was, I was almost like, wait, is she an actor? <laughs> Um, but in the movie, she's like silly and ridiculous, kind of ridiculous Mm -hmm. in a different way from Miss Charming. Um, like Anna takes herself super seriously kind of way and, and, and her little like frolic. In the movie? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Well, there's also in the, in the book, she's the one that always goes, what, what? Right. That's her too. No, that's Miss Charming. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I was like, "Who? Wait, so- <laughs> no, Miss right. Miss Hartwright was the one who was in the cottage mm-hmm. with her ailing mother." Oh yeah. Um, and then so Jane's obsession with Austin in the setup in the movie is way more intense. Yeah, I think for me, um, she was one of the biggest differences because she has way more backstory in the book. Like, I feel like in the, in the movie. Oh yeah, I forgot about the boyfriends, all the boyfriends in the book. Yeah, I mean, there's so much, I mean, even up to her job, like we don't know anything mm-hmm. about her personal life other than she doesn't have a boyfriend and she's obsessed with Darcy in the movie. Like she's very topical and I think in mm-hmm. some parts she's even kind of more like portrayed as more of like a wet blanket pushover. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think in the, in the book, she's had, she's very like, she's a stronger character. Yeah. Um, and she's even kind of vain, which I didn't yes, really in the get book. in the, yeah. And the mm-hmm. movie is totally not like that. So yeah. 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 So yeah. I mean, I think Jane was one of the really big differences for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. Um, and then another thing in the book that she, there was a weird, like, uh, maybe it was like part of her psychological, like she went to Austin land to try to get over Mr. Darcy in the book. Mm-hmm. And she was really like, almost kind of like hating on the experience for like the first part of it and like degrading it and making it seem stupid and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I, thought, I just kind of, I was excited to see her grow out of that. Mm-hmm. That part, I was like, stop it. Everybody would love to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely the movie is lighter. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, yeah, it's more, it's more, yeah, a little more upbeat. comedic. Yeah. Um, and then like Jane, another Jane thing. So her because her character did have a lot more depth. You're right. Um, but I, I uh, she had the painting element in the book, mm-hmm. which I mean, she did have the sketching in the movie, but the painting was like a much bigger. It was role. a part of who she it was, like a mm-hmm. facet of her yeah. growth and stuff. Yeah. Um, and. <laughs> She's not, I mean, she's not different necessarily, but she had a bigger role, Mrs. Waddlesbrook, <laughs> um, in, in the movie. She had a bigger yeah, role. for sure. Um, well, there's characters that aren't even in Yeah, the Mrs. Movie. Um, T- Tittle, Tittle, what's her name? <laughs> I wrote it down somewhere. Aunt Sophronia. Oh, yeah, her, but also, um, how do I know? <laughs> I want to know who you think is Mrs. Tittles. <laughs> no, uh, Templeton. I can't think of who that is. It's in the, that's what I'm saying. It's in the, she's in the book. That's the, one of the people, her husband is the one that um, I think is inappropriate. Oh, I think that's Aunt Sophronia, isn't it? Well, then who's. Then, and her husband is. was. So then who, there, there is a Mr. and Mrs. Templeton for sure. That's, I think that must be Sophronia Templeton. Oh, maybe. maybe. Okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, but anyway they're husband, not even yeah. in. They're not even. I clearly couldn't put a face with them, so I, I yeah, confused me. Um, yeah, so they're not even in the book at all or in yeah. the movie. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, there were some big changes, and then uh, there's more. Uh, there's uh, some other stuff that I'm going to talk about when we get to the what we thought the movie did better, kind of yeah. section. 
that I have. And I think too, one of the big things for me, there were two things. One is they make the Austin land actually like a much larger thing than what it is in the book. As far as there's different in the book, there's a lot of different locations and Mm -hmm. different experiences. Whereas it, in the movie, it seems like it's just like the main Mm -hmm. house and it's a one experience like that everybody goes to and is involved Mm -hmm. in for 20 days or whatever it is. Yeah. It was kind of cool. Um, in, in the, I was really cool in the book, like in the ball Mm -hmm. at the ball she was, she realized she didn't know it. And she realized that there's other, yeah, other awesome or other, what was the house called? Well, at Pembroke, Pembroke, but like other estates. But like there's other estates. And then um, in the movie, everybody is an actor at the ball. And so it was fun that there were other Mm non-actors in the book who were in love with Mr. Nobly. That was hilarious. (laughs) Yeah. And he's the, he's the other big thing that I, that I wanted to point out too, is his character was a lot different in Mm -hmm. the book. versus Both very Darcy, very Mr. Darcy. Yes. But But their personal story and and, but even what his purpose, like he wasn't in the, in the movie, he is not an actor per se. Like he's related to Mrs. Waddles Brook and he's kind of there. Like, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, eh, you know, this isn't my, he's a my history scene. professor. Yeah. has a broken heart and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And he's filling in for uh, captain East, right. Or whatever, until he gets there. And then, mm-hmm. so he's, doesn't he, he's reluctant to be there to begin with. Whereas in the book, he's an actor from the very beginning. And mm-hmm. even the way it ends is completely different. I mean, yeah. the ending result is the same, but how they get there is completely different. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right. So, those are some of the big differences. What do you think about? Um, you said you had something for the what? Maybe what it did better, or wh- where were you going? Sorry, you. Yeah, were holding um, on to something. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So, what did I think the movie did better? Um. I or did well, I guess, is, was your question. Um, I loved Miss Charming, the change, the subtle changes to Miss Charming's character, how she was like the friend, the confidant kind of, Mm -hmm. um, to Jane, uh, even though she, she was like, in the book, she was ridiculous, but seemed unaware of her ridiculousness, but in the movie, she's ridiculous, but she seems aware of it, and she's having fun with it, and she doesn't care. I felt like, yeah, sometimes you have to wonder. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely, I mean, she she's holds on. Like, she's, I think she just doesn't, yeah, she doesn't care regardless. Like, even if she is ridiculous, she's like, um, I have money and I'm going to, you know, buy this place. And yeah, I know, care. right? Like, she um, doesn't care. What did you, th- I, I really like, I like Mr. Nobly in book. I don't, I don't know that I prefer one Nobly over the other. I mean, they're both. Mr. Darcy in their own ways and like you can't go wrong with a Mr. Darcy (laughs) um I think I like him in the movie better but I didn't just like him in the book yeah Yeah. I think that like you said you can't really go wrong but I I kind of like that I like the surprise of him not being an actor in the movie you know when I remember when I first watched it I was like oh I love that but yeah. to have him be an actor with everybody else, like, I feel like it's not, like, as cool of a twist. He's just an actor that fell in love with somebody who came, you know, to the... Yeah. Anyway, so I really like that about it. Um, <laughs> I did like in the book that he was like, I think this might be my last time here. Yeah. He's like, I'm not... In, it's not fun anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else did they... I don't know. I think... I like... Or uh, I... <laughs> had some issues with Molly, the friend in the book. I thought she was really, um, I mean, Jane has a passion for Jane Austen, Mr. Mm -hmm. Like as somebody who gets obsessed with things, like I understand. (laughs) And I felt like the friend was really dismissive and kind of demeaning of her passions or her singular passion, really. Like which is interesting because even her mom, like, I feel like everyone except for maybe her, was it her aunt, right? The woman, um, her great aunt or her something. Great aunt. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everyone kind of treated her that way, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah. Um, so I liked it, it, 
we didn't, she didn't have the mom or the great aunt, the whole premise of how she ended up there was different in the movie yeah. from the book, um, that she went there by choice versus being bequeathed, um, a trip by the, in the aunt's will. Um, but Molly's character being the person who she was talking to about her obsession and how she mm. needs to move on just was a little more supportive. I felt in the movie than in the book when she just seemed really like kind of yeah. mean. <laughs> and she, in the movie, she even made her that horrible costume. I know. To wear on her. And she journey. wore it on the plane. It was oh so funny. I think another thing that was really cool that, um, I mean, it's a, pr- a lot harder to do in a book, but what I really liked about what they did with the movie is they made it, it, I mean, the characters were written ridiculously, so it was perfect the way that they carried that out. But even the location itself, like, it's so campy and ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, with the, when they go shooting and they, sh- they like shoot out dead birds, shoot out taxidermy the, birds. Yeah, the taxidermy birds for them to shoot. And they have fake roosters posted everywhere that make like, re- it's like recorded crowing and, you know, <laughs> just shit like that. Like, it's just so funny and then the guys the oh my god I, oh I forgot about this part when I was watching it last night when she, Jane's arriving at Pembroke and she gets she, you know she starts she's walking up the stairs and then all of the guys like all the women are horribly unattractive yes. and these ugly maids older women all this stuff like they do everything they can to make them horrible and then all the guys have even padded like junk yes oh um, my gosh it's oh my like it's just hilarious suck yeah, I mean, it just they went so over the top that it was just so hilarious. Um, <laughs> oh, I think so they did funny. a really good job in the movie of really making it like just such yeah. a fun thing. Yeah, and um, I loved a lot of the casting choices. Um, there's an amazing cast in this movie. <laughs> Can yeah. I just say, like, so one of the guys, there's three main guys who play like the types of Austin heroes, I guess. Um, so then there's there's Captain East who's like the sea captain who come or the navy guy who comes back um mm-hmm. to be reunited with his lost love or whatever. And that's Ricky Whittle, who I adore. Yeah. Um, and then there's JJ Field, who is Mr. Darcy, aka Mr. Nobly, mm-hmm. or Mr. Nobly, aka Mr. I mean, he's just basically Mr. Darcy. <laughs> yeah essentially um he's amazing uh and the guy who he's from Battlestar Galactica <laughs> um he plays uh Colonel Andrews mm-hmm. so it's funny with him I think they casted him perfectly it was so hard for me to read his character in the book because they made him sound really dreamy and attractive yeah and in the book they for his ridiculous personality I think they cast him really well yes so it was really hard for me to kind of do that but yeah they, I think that they did the amazing cast and even yes. Jane Seymour as yes Brooks, she's so good yes and she's so awful <laughs> yeah she's so good yeah. um oh I loved in the movie that we got to see a peek behind the scenes with the staff when their little like pool area was it a pool I don't know it seemed like a pool yeah it was it like their like, like little staff lounge yeah like, quarters or staff areas yeah They're, like watching yeah, they're like watching, watching those, a little like, box so, TV. Yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> um, and let's see here. Um, I loved the scene. This wasn't in the book, but the rescue scene um, when Jane first kind of gets to the horse. <laughs> with the horse and Mr. Nobly and her, <laughs> her dress is torn and she's <laughs> so ridiculous again. <laughs> um. I loved Miss Charming buying Austin Land at the end. I thought that was yeah. great. Um, but my very favorite thing, my favorite scene in the entire movie that I actually just watched again on YouTube, even though I bought the movie, I just watched it for the scene, <laughs> is the makeover scene. And the song in the background is Betty Davis Eyes. <laughs> and it's so good. It's so good. Like, even if you haven't seen the movie or don't want to see the movie, you should look up Austin Land, should, Betty Davis Eyes, and watch it. You should it. link to it. Oh, I will. Okay, good idea. Thank you. Yeah, oh my God, I could watch that over and over. It's There's so many little funny little things in there. Like from the moment that she walks into the room after her makeover, and it's all during this one song playing. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. 
And then like the wind blows. Yes, and, her oh, it's like ridiculous. bonnet falls off and the <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Sorry. Um that is I'm making that to myself. I'm trying to think if I had a favorite scene. I don't know. I did like the it's getting hot in here. Oh my gosh, when she's the laying it on the piano. The piano scene, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's they, so well, great. They I could watch her, this movie over and over. It's they, so they good. They force her to, you know, present mm -hmm. herself and to, um, you know, showcase her talents. And she goes, mm -hmm. no, really, I can't play the piano. And they're like, no, 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 we insist, do it. And she goes, okay, well, you asked for it. This is the only song I can play. So she starts doing, <laughs> it's getting <laughs> hot in here with one finger on the piano. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> and Mrs. Waddlesbrook is horrified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway um, obviously we liked it I don't think you, yeah in case you guys weren't aware <laughs> yeah there were some things that I liked more about the book too um I liked Miss Hartwright's character in the book um I liked Aunt Sophronia's character even though she wasn't in the movie I really did too that's why mm -hmm. I'm kind of sad that she wasn't in the yeah she was like a nice supportive she felt like, like a real aunt yes kind of. it was just nice to have I guess maybe um Miss Charming kind of took on a little bit of that like supportive friend role because otherwise mm. Jane didn't really have a friend mm. there you yeah know? you know I would be interested to know somebody who hasn't watched the movie or read the book if they sat down to watch it or even read the book I guess if they would guess that Martin was an actor the whole time yeah I would be curious too I actually it had been a while since I had seen the movie with when I was reading the book um and the Martin character is different, um, a little bit different. Uh, and so it took me a moment to realize what was going on. And I feel like they do a better job of masking it in the book. She does a better job of masking it in the book than they do in the movie. It seems super obvious. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Martin was one of the characters that I wrote down for preferring in the book. Um, Jane's painting. I wish that that was in there. I felt like it added a lot of depth. Um, and the lawyer at the beginning was such a Mr. Collins. I mean, I oh, know they the cut book. out yeah. that entire storyline, but in the book, I was just cracking up about him. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's the other thing, um, that they talk about in the book because they have, they connect it to other, she connects, the author connects it to other Jane Austen books mm -hmm. because the whole, uh, Captain East and, um, whatever her name was. Miss, uh, Hartwright. Part, right all that was a persuasion yeah very much a persuasion uh, storyline that they straight up said mm -hmm. from the beginning was a persuasion storyline mm -hmm. so um just really interesting there were some other nods that they didn't really capture in the book but I mean in the movie but well and Martin I mean, Martin is very much a um George um Wickham yeah he's very much a Wickham yeah yeah so it's just I don't know it's just really interesting I think um it's hard because I know if you're writing a book versus doing a movie, like you, you have to, mm -hmm. you have to give and take. Right. So I think, I think given that they had to make it into, you know, an hour and a half, mm -hmm. I think they did a pretty good job. I mean, like I said, there are other things that I wish there was a little more depth with Jane's yeah. character and X, Y, and Z, but overall, like we, that's the first thing we watched. We, we didn't even know it was a book. So I think that, um, that I almost like think they could have gone even a little bit campier with like some of the cheesiness in the movie to 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 note those connections to the Jane Austen novels and done like how they do in some movies where there's like they like freeze frame and they like write something on the screen you know and then continue. I feel yeah. like it just it would have been fun to have those nods explicitly stated the way that they did in the book because I really loved that because I was thinking, you know, it's, it's so nice to have, this is a really nice thing for an author to do, um, is to anticipate what the reader is thinking and then to give a nod on the page to what the reader is thinking to kind of like acknowledge yeah, it. Cause as we're all thinking like, oh my gosh, he's, he's so Darcy. And she's talking about how he's so Darcy or like how, you know, is she a, you know, Jane, whatever I can't remember everybody's names I'm terrible with it but like kind of sorry. yeah sorry I just wanted to see the difference so the book came out in 2007 
and then Auslan came out in 2013. So, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure how, what the gap was there. Yeah. I genuinely love both. I think both are excellent. I recommend both. <laughs> Do I it. don't even recommend seeing, reading one or seeing one first. We both saw the movie first before reading the book. And I, and the book is written in third person which I, and I did not dislike it. And I think it's because Jane Austen writes in third person and it was written in a very Jane Austen-y kind of voice. That's true. I didn't think about that. Um, like it felt, I, I mean, I have recently, <laughs> recently within the past two years, like gorged myself on everything Pride and Prejudice for All World Online. Um, so it is very fresh in my mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. because I like read and reread and reread and reread Pride and Prejudice. I read it in audiobook. I read it on paperback. I reread it on paperback. I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it has a very Jane Austen voice feel to it. Yeah, no, I agree with that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, it's interesting because I remember when I went and I saw that this was a book, it didn't have as great ratings as mm-hmm. the film did. And so, mm-hmm. um, I was just looking at like because when I was looking at Shannon Hale's website and she was talking about this book the she has a thing right on there that says I am obsessed with Jane Austen I wrote this book as a reader wanting to read this book I am not a historian I am Hmm. not a a, you know like this is not supposed to be me me writing a Jane Austen book so if you are looking for something that's not silly something that's very Jane Austen this is not for you like this is not you know and that made me start wondering, like, I wonder if that's what some of the reviews were like, oh, it's too silly, you know, for Jane mm. Austen, because people were hoping that it was very authentic, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So um, uh, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Everyone, I'm looking at right now, like, everyone's like, I hate, hate, hate this book. Oh. Um, it, pe- should leave uh, Jane Austen as it is. Oh, um, purists. Mm. Uh, watch the movie don't read the book probably because maybe it doesn't come across as something I don't know but anyway it's just really interesting I was wondering if she if she felt that she needed to put that I was like she must have got some hate for this so I feel bad for her I think it was great I thought she did a really good job it's I super mean, clever like yes. every girl like we said a hundred times every like I would totally spend my life savings to go do something like that just like yeah. she does in the well in the movie version yeah but, you know huh. it's like I feel like it's something that so many people can relate to. It's just a fun story. So, I am genuinely yeah. surprised at the hate for this, considering some books that I have genuinely disliked that have glowing ratings, like one that we both read and we're not going to mention, but or we both read part of and we both DNF'd. <laughs> yeah. We DNF'd the crap out of that. <laughs> But we're not going to say what it is because <laughs> it's really popular. I'll just drink my wine before I'm here. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, anyways, I'm just really interesting. I figured I would share that now that I'm looking. I mean, they're not horrible reviews. She has a 4.2 out of five, and she yeah. has 1,500 reviews. So it's not. It's not like she has horrible reviews, but she, her the movie has such great reviews. I was just curious what the discrepancy was since I had seen that thing yesterday, that little disclaimer. That is interesting. Yeah. But hmm. just goes to show you can't please everyone. So. I think that there's so many Jane Austen purists and like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's a difficult, I mean, like with All World Online, for the first book, Pride and Prejudice, it's like so out there that... I feel like it avoided some of the, I mean, like you didn't go into reading all world up my weird lit RPG, Jane Austen <laughs> mashup. Nobody goes into reading that thinking it's going to be like a pure yeah. historical reenactment of Jane Austen yeah. <laughs> times. Yeah, for sure. So I feel like it avoided that a little bit. Um, but I don't know. People just get a little bit stodgy with their Jane Austen. Yeah yeah just hardcore I think people are the same way though with like Jane Eyre um yeah I think I mean 
Yeah. Like I said, you can't please everybody. So yeah. it is what it is, but I think a lot of uh, the large majority of people would have could appreciate both. So mm -hmm. it's just fun, you know? Yeah. I love, yeah. I, yeah. It's a great book. Great movie. Um, but anyway, okay. So, um, we already kind of talked about, um, what the, we already, we already talked about there's a second book and, we kind of talked about whether or not you thought you would go on, but you're not, you're thinking you probably won't read this. I don't book. know. It's, I, it's mm -hmm. called Midnight in Austin Land. Yes. And I really love series that continue with the same characters or at least give us. Like it was Miss Charming or somebody else. Mention, yeah. I, I want a tie-in. I want a mention of Nobly and Jane, you know, like I want them to like show up. I don't know. I want there to be hope that we get to see the characters that we already know and love. This one, um, yeah, this one is about a whole new character. Like you said, I think your name's Charlotte yeah. or something. So, yeah. So, um, I will probably think about it a little bit longer, yeah. whether or not I want to do that. What about you? Um, I, 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 I really enjoyed the narrator. Mm -hmm. I thought she was really good. Yeah, so she did she, excellent. If she does the second one, I didn't check, but then that, that's probably, that would be definitely, I would consider that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, and it's an easy, it, they're not long books, so it's quick and easy and fun. Yeah. You know? So like if I need a palate cleanser or something, heck yeah, why not? And it was so fun. And I definitely found myself being like, I want to go listen to my book. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Any last, uh, words on this? I do have a couple. Um, yeah. I have prepared a statement. I've not prepared a statement. Um, so I, do, I have two questions. One question is open-ended, which is why is Mrs. Waddlesbrook, this is maybe my one critique of the book and the movie. Why is Mrs. Waddlesbrook so terrible? We never learn why she is so terrible. Like she is so cruel and yeah, like genuinely despises Jane because she is not rich like I don't know there's like I wish we could have had a little bit either yeah uh, from the book or the movie just a little bit of a a bite a little nugget to to help us see why Miss Waddlesbrook is an awful human being because she is yeah I was gonna say she's probably just unhappy because her husband's horrible but that's only in the movie that's not even in the book so yeah the handsy one yeah so yeah I don't know it's a good question yeah and then um so that was just a, a food for thought question and then um I wanted to have us list our favorite Jane Austen adaptations oh sorry I should have warned you <laughs> I already made a list <laughs> oh, of course you did uh you could go first okay um, oh, wait, you mean book or movie or movie both? sorry um oh. film or movie film? yeah okay. all of mine are movie or show or okay. serious. Um, okay. My number one, one, which I know you're going to disagree with. <laughs> I know you are, and you already know what I'm going to say, Yeah, which is Pride and Prejudice 2005. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's a great one. I'm, it I is, it's, but it's one of my top comfort movies. I could yeah. watch it if I'm sad or mm -hmm. bored, or it's just one of those movies that I can put on and get lost for a little while. And it's so beautiful. And the music is so beautiful. The film or cinematography, I guess it is. Oh, the cinematography oh, and the music is, yes. is amazing. Yeah. And the, I think the casting is great. Um, and then I, you're, I know you prefer the 1995. I just like that it's drawn series. out. I like that. It's I know. Not, I feel like, yeah. It has just, all of the scenes. Yeah. 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 But I do, I just, I have always had Nothing against the actress. I just have never felt like the casting was right for Jane in oh, the 1995 mm -hmm. one. And it always throws me off. And I also just love um, Jane in the 2005 one, which is... Um, Pike. Yeah, oh, she's amazing. And she narrates the audiobook. If you like audiobooks, you should definitely listen to The Pride and Prejudice audiobook narrated by Rosamund Pike. It is just brilliant, stunning, beautiful. Yeah, she's really good. She's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. Um, Austin Land. Uh, Sanditon. You'll wait, cry. Wait, wait, what did, did you say? 
Wait, what are we listing? I thought you said Pride and Prejudice retail. What did you say? Favorite you- Jane Austen adaptations. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. sorry. I was totally, I was stuck on Pride and Prejudice. I'm like, wait, I only know of like, well, there's a bunch of old ones, but I was like, I don't yeah, know. there are a bunch of old ones. Okay. Um, I didn't, I haven't list, I didn't list any of the Sense and Sensibilities. I don't actually really like any of them. <laughs> or, I mean, I've, I've watched them all, but I don't, none of them have I rewatched. Um, Sanditon, I love so much. Yeah, I like Sanditon. A lot You'll too. ball your eyes out. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um, the Jane Austen Book Club. Oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. It's not actually an adaptation, it's more of an inspired by, but yeah, but it's um, so great. It's so good. Um, Lost in Austin is really fun. Uh, I loved, probably because this, I think, was my first introduction to straight up Jane Austen, is the 1996 Emma with Gwyneth Paltrow. I I do really love that one. That's my favorite of all the Emmas, I think. My favorite of all the Emmas is the one with, um... The chick from Phantom of the Opera? No, that's not who it is, is it? Mm-hmm. No, it's not Emmy Rossum. No. It's um, it's uh, it's not the new a, one. It's, it's the BBC. It's yeah, the I know one which one you're talking about. Um, I think that's my favorite one. Yeah. Um, she it, it has oh yeah, Romola. Yeah, Garari or Yeah, yeah. I really love that one. I liked that one. I just I think that Emma went that Gwyneth Paltrow one has because it was like the first one that I saw. Yeah. No, I totally get it. The one that I've been waiting forever for them to um, do, to remake and do an Persuasion? adaptation for is Persuasion. That's like, that is my second. I love that one. I, it's I like know. my favorite story. And they never do that one. They do I all know. the other ones like five times. So um, I love that one. Um, I mean, I like, I enjoy the, the, I don't know what year it was, but um, the BBC version from, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, I know which one you're talking ago. about. And it is really good. But it's, it's really the only good. one there is that yeah. I know of. So um, I was really excited when the new one came out on Netflix and I didn't have high hopes for it. I know it's gotten a lot of hate, but I actually really enjoyed it. Maybe that's because I'm just like chomping at the bit for persuasion. So I'm willing mm. to like anything, but I personally enjoyed it. In fact, I'll probably watch it again. So. Well, that is now moved to the top of my watch list. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it. And um, I mean, it's kind of fun. It's different. Like it's not super serious, like a BBC, you know, mm-hmm. But it's, I really love the BBC fun. one. I actually, almost, I know this is not Jane Austen, but I almost put it on here, which was North and South. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with that one. <laughs> you know, and I'm very aware that it is not Jane Austen. But it is, can I just tell you uh, that I have been trying to buy that? This is my nerd coming out, you guys. <laughs> I have been trying to buy that for years. You can't get it through Masterpiece Theater anymore. You can't get it online unless you have like BritBox or something, but I don't want a subscription just so I could watch it. Like I want to buy it. I want to own it. I want it to go into my collection, even if it's just a streaming one. You can't buy it on on Amazon? I don't think so. And I've tried to get, I've tried to get like, you can buy like a disc. Like I've tried to buy the disc. And every time I try and buy it, I get a note from the seller saying, this is um, whatever they call it, whatever the British like actual technology version is and it they're like if you're in america you cannot play this i'm gonna refund your money and i was like i cannot get it to save my life oh anywhere. man i know i'm so bummed because Ugh. it used to be on netflix so i used to be able to watch it whenever i wanted and but it, it's for like the last probably like eight years or something it's been gone and now i can't so find good it the the look back or turn around or whatever it is that he Let's says see. oh my god, oh my god so it's so and his accent oh Oh my gosh. Um, I have one more on this list okay. and I don't actually know how you feel about this. And I'm really curious Ooh, to see what I'm your excited. reaction is. What is it? Clueless. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I like it. It's fun, but. Uh, I think it's so clever when you actually think about it and it. the connection to, or the. It that is it's, very clever. That it's it Emma. Clever. It's so clever. It is. I mean, it, and it also has a super big nostalgia element. Yeah. You know, when for... I was younger though, and I was watching that, I didn't know what Emma, like I didn't, when I was watching it, I never put it with Jane Austen really? or anything because I, I had never read Emma, I guess. So I didn't oh. really get it. Um, so when I was watching it, I totally enjoyed it just because it's ridiculous and it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and can I just say that Paul Rudd still looks the same as I he know. did in that movie? Like, how old is that now? 30 years? 
Um, but anyway, so <laughs> that's uh, crazy. I but, know. um, but yeah, I just feel like, uh, I, I didn't, for me, I didn't even get that for the longest time. I didn't, um, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Josh. I always, so I always forget about that one. Yeah. Name is Josh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the music in there. It's so good. It's such a great movie. Anyway, yeah. even though you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, it's, I, to me, it's not even in the list. I know. The list to me. I know. Do you have but, any others that I didn't mention? I mean, I, I know mean, there's like 8,000 adaptations of Mansfield Park. Um, I liked uh, Mansfield Park is fun, but yeah. I, I really, um, North, uh, Northanger Abbey's fun, but I've only ever seen one. Oh, there's a Northanger. I didn't even realize this. There's a Northanger, Northanger Abbey that has JJ Field. I don't think I've seen it. Oh, wait, that's the one I think I've seen. I do, and I, I enjoy it. Wait, let me make sure. JJ Field, who plays our Darcy, named nobly in Austin Land. Yep, that's the one I've seen. It's mm -hmm. fun. You should watch it. It's really I good. Should. Yeah, I'm, I should. I've probably name. seen I know it has Felicity Jones. I probably have seen it, uh, but it's, I mean, like with any Jane Austen adaptation, it's always worth a rewatch. <laughs> yeah. No, I've seen that one a few times. It's really good. Um, I think um, the other one, if we're north and south, is would be like one or two on my list. Like I absolutely love that. Even one. though it's not um, Jane Austen. <laughs> yeah, but if we're not doing that, um, if we're not totally keeping it Jane Austen, I love obviously the BBC original version of um, of Jane Eyre too mm -hmm. with Toby Stevenson. I'm a huge Toby Stevenson fan, so I love, 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 love that. And that was yeah. the first time I ever was introduced to that story. I didn't even know about it until I was, like, flipping one night, and it was, like, super gothic, creepy scene, and I was like, oh, my God, what is this? They actually have good stuff on Masterpiece Theater? What the heck? And then ah, I was, like, addicted. I was obsessed. In. I was, like, trying to – I had to – it took me forever, but I had, I had to, like – you know, hunt down the four disc DVD version. And yeah, I was like, I was in love with it from then. And then I read it like five times after that. And so, yeah, yeah that's on my list too. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, that was a curveball. I wasn't quite ready for that one, but Sorry. I'm probably going to be, no, it's okay. I'm probably going to be laying in bed and be like, oh yeah, that one. We forgot to mention that one. Uh, wait. Okay. Um, okay. So we mentioned North and South. I'm going to make a list in the show notes. Um, or we can go over this when we stop recording, actually. <laughs> but anyway, so that was um, fun. That's a fun question. Yeah. I guess we don't have to say, oh, who would you, who would you cast for uh, no. Jane Austen Land? We no, know. I thought the casting was excellent in yeah. this movie. Yeah. I do. I do kind of wish that they that Shannon Hale hadn't named the main character Jane. both because of Jane Austen and also because of Jane in Pride and Prejudice. It just, it's like a very, I mean, it is a very Jane Austen-y name. So I don't know. It just like got stuck in my head. Yeah. It's almost like confusing, even though it's so simply, it's so simple. It should make sense, but it's also confusing at the same time. Yes. Yeah. I kind of get that too. However, I will say I almost named the main character in Pride and Prejudice or Pride and Prejudice and All World Online Pride and Prejudice, Jane, later change it. I originally had her as Jane, later changed it to Olivia. So I understand the urge to do it. Yeah. I do understand that. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, um, if we haven't sold you on it by now, then you clearly are not meant to watch slash read this story. No, but you should totally watch and read this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so sorry we've been yammering on. However, uh, we really enjoyed it, as you can tell. Um, are we good? We're we wrapping up. You got mm. anything else? Any others? curveball questions we need to answer no i have nothing else all right cool I have nothing. all right <laughs> i have nothing <laughs> i have nothing <laughs> um okay sorry my computer's going a little wonky all right so that's it for this episode thank you for listening to us go on and on about really random things um and get overly excited about really dorky things <laughs> but that's who we are. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening. Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode's many links and book recommendations. There's a lot. <laughs> and movie recommendations and all the things. Uh, we'll be back in a couple weeks to chat about the next book talk book sensation that we picked, which is dun, 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 A Song of Achilles, which we mentioned by Madeline I'm excited. Miller. I've never read it. 
I've only so excited to chat about it. Um, so anyways, in the meantime, if you enjoy the show, please leave our, a review wherever you listen. Listen, oh my gosh, and come hang out with us in our Facebook group, the No Shelf Control Facebook group. So um, we're going to try and uh, keep up to date with all the things we're going to be talking about so you can join in too. So until next time, happy reading adventures and happy reading. so long, farewell, la vidas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>